This is section 3.2, part D. We're now going to turn to the problem of finding an equation for an exponential function when we don't have a table that shows us sequential values of x that all increase by 1. So far, when we wanted an exponential function, finding the value of a and b wasn't that difficult because we had that table of sequential values. We knew what happened as the x values increased by 1. Now, however, We'll look at how do we find equations where we have data with the x values being more spread out. Keep in mind the goal. We still need to find a and b because ultimately we're looking for the exponential form y equals ab to the x. All right, in our first example, we are looking for the equation of an exponential function that contains the points 0, 2, and 4. 162. Notice our x value definitely did not increase by 1 here. One piece of good news, we're given the y-intercept, the 0, 2. Since that's the y-intercept, we already know the a value is 2. So I'm going to start by writing my exponential function, y equals 2, b to the x. I now need to figure out the b, and in order to do that, I'm going to substitute this second point into my equation. The y value is 162. That's equal to 2 times b to the x, but x is 4. That equation will allow me to solve for b. We'll divide by 2. So 81 equals b to the fourth. And this one happens to come out evenly, so if you already know what number b is, that's great. You can go ahead and just write it down. If not, keep in mind that one way to get rid of an exponent is to just apply the reciprocal power. 4 times 1 fourth would just give me b to the first, or plain old b, when I do that. Now if I do that on the right-hand side, I must do the same thing on the left-hand side. And so, 81 to the 1 fourth power gives me 3. And again, that was kind of a nice one. It came out evenly, so you may have been able to do that one in your head. All right, I know A, I know B. My equation then is y equals 2 times 3 to the x. I did want to point out that these are fairly easy to check on your calculator. If I were to go ahead and, in my calculator, type in my equation, 2 times 3 to the x, and then just go to the table, notice my first point, 0, 2, is right there. And then if I want to check the second point, I can plug in an x of 4, and that gives me the 162. So I've checked to see that my two points really are included in that function. All right, let's try a similar problem. In number two, I'm once again given the y-intercept, which is great, 0, 2.1. So I already know that a is 2.1. And that means that y is equal to 2.1 b to the x. The second point I was given this time is 5, 9.7. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my equation, and I'll use that information to solve for b. y is 9.7. That equals 2.1 times b to the fifth power. I'd like to solve for b, so I'll start by dividing by 2.1. There we go. I do get a value, but it's not a real nice value this time. It's a big, long decimal that goes on forever. In order to preserve the accuracy of my problem, I'm going to jot down a few decimal places, like 4.619. 
but I'm going to keep the whole number in the calculator. And as I do the next steps, I'm actually going to work with this number rather than my rounded off version so that I don't get too much round off error too early. All right, I'm almost to the point where I know B. B is being raised to the fifth power. To get rid of that fifth power, I will raise it to the one-fifth power. And that means I need to do the same thing on the left. And again, I'm going to come back over here where I've got the whole number in my calculator, and I'm just going to raise that answer to the one-fifth power. And I get approximately 1.358. When you do problems like this in my math lab, they will often give directions like, you know, don't round off at the intermediate steps. Um, round the final answer off to however many decimal places they want. This is what they mean. Keep the whole thing in the calculator and round off at the end. All right, so I now know my function. y equals 2.1 times my base, 1.358 to the x power. Let's go to the calculator and double check this one as well. I'll type in the function that we just found and then go to the table. There's that 0, 2.1, which I expected. And then I want to check and see what happens when x is 5. Now you'll notice I don't quite get exactly 9.7. I have 9.6988. The reason for that is we've got some round off here going on. Again, this base wasn't exactly 1.358. There were more decimal places that we didn't write down. So it's not surprising that there'll be a little bit of round off error in that calculation as well. I won't check all of these from now on, but I just wanted to mention to you, it's a great way to kind of test to make sure you've done your math correctly, especially on a test or something like that. All right, so far we've been lucky, and the reason we've been lucky is every problem we've done so far has given us the y-intercept. One of our points had x equal to zero. In problem number three, our luck has run out. We don't have the y-intercept given. So I don't know either a or b to start with. What I'm going to do is just start with my general equation, y equals a b to the x. And I'm going to plug both points into that equation, one at a time, of course. Let's start with this one. y is 18 when x is 7. Now I'm also going to plug in this one. y is 6 when x is 3. I now have a system of two equations and two unknowns, which I should be able to solve eventually for both A and B. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to divide the equations. Divide the left sides, divide the right sides. 18 divided by 6 gives me 3. A divided by A is just 1. And then subtracting the exponents, I get B to the 4th. I can now solve for b by raising both sides to the one-fourth power. And b is about 1.316. Probably should have my approximate wavy equal sign there. All right, so great, we know B. We don't know A yet, but I can figure A out now by plugging this B value into either of these two equations. It really doesn't matter which one. I'll just take the top one. 18 equals A times 1.316 to the seventh power. Again, I'm going to keep all the accuracy I can, so I'm going to say that would be 1.316, which really is this whole big long number, 
to the seventh power is about 6.839 a. And then to calculate a, I just divide by the 6.839. And again, I'm not going to round off. I'm going to use this whole number. So I'm dividing by my previous answer. Remember, that second negative sign gives you the previous answer. And my A is about 2.632. So here we go. We know both A and B now. And our function is Y equals 2.632 times 1.316 to the x power. I won't take the time to do it on the video, but again, if you'd like to check that, you could, of course, just plug the equation into your calculator and see if those two points, at least approximately, are on there. All right. In this last example, rather than being given a couple of points, we're given a graph. We're going to basically do this problem exactly the same as the previous one. We weren't given two points, but we should be able to find two points from the graph. So I'm going to use two really nice points. I don't want to estimate fractions or decimals. And the first one that I see that looks really good here is, looks like 2, 3. It goes right through the corner of the grid there. So 2, 3 is going to be one of my points. And I think this one just misses, just misses. This one looks pretty good, though. 5, 8. Once I've got the two points that I'm going to use, I'm going to follow the same procedure as I did in the last problem. I know I'm looking for y equals a, b to the x probably should have mentioned this, but we can tell that this is an exponential shape. So y equals ab to the x is a good choice. And let's see, let's plug in 5, 8. y is 8. And x is 5. And then I'll plug in the 2, 3. y is 3. x is 2. I'll divide my equations, and 8 thirds, again, I'll keep it in my calculator, but it's about 2.667. A divided by A is 1, and subtracting those exponents, I get B cubed. I'll need to raise that to the 1 -third power to get just B to the first. And I'll do the same thing on the left-hand side, raise it to the one-third power. So I keep all the decimal places the calculator had, raise to the one-third power, and I get about 1.387 if I round to three decimal places for the B. All right, go back and use either equation. To solve for a, maybe I'll use the bottom one this time. Three equals a times, I now know b is 1.387 squared. Back to my value with lots of decimal places, let's square that. It's about 1.923a, and then I'll divide by 1.923. Again, these rounded off values are just a convenience to keep track of my math, but when I do it in the calculator, I'm keeping the whole number. So 3 divided by that answer is about 1.560, if I keep three decimal places. So my function is y equals 1.560 times 1.387 to the x. 
All right, that brings us to the end of section 3.2.